Okay, hello. Uh, this is the third session on uh, Helenus. On this session, we are going to cover the integration points that are with uh, PECO and ACA. On this session, I'm going only going to cover PECO because open source. Uh, nonetheless, the APIs are exactly the same. So uh, PECO is derived from Alpaca. Uh, these uh, PECO connectors provide the same API and Helenus also exposes the same API when using either library. So it would be, uh, what I'm going to show you would be interchangeably. So let's uh, let's get to it. So what's Helenus? So Helenus is a Scala library meant to, uh, meant to uh, uh, work with uh, Cassandra in, a, in an easier manner or um, in a type safe manner while trying to avoid a complex API. So, uh, the first question that you should always ask whenever using a library is why should you use it? So there are some very good libraries, some very good, some very established libraries such as Phantom and Quill, which are great in their own way, that defines some kind of, uh, especially Phantom, uh, which is quite similar to Slack. They define an ORM uh, approach where you define tables and uh, from those tables you define queries and whatnot. So, um, our approach is, is a bit different. Whenever we try to use these libraries, we uh, notice that they weren't fitting um, the approach that we would have towards working with Cassandra. It was it was too complicated, or it had um, some 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 quirks and some workarounds that that we didn't like. Um, so our motivation with with uh, Helenus is that we put our queries center place. Our queries are actually what's going to be interacting with the database. And this is what Helenus is doing. Most of the, the interaction goes through defining uh, SQL queries and then adding some interactions with that, adding, adding some types. Um, so we can um, do the integration between uh, Cassandra and or the interaction between Cassandra and Scala uh, more easily. So, uh, this is the uh, GitHub uh, page where you can see how to install it, the motivation, some of the features, the supported codex, and a bit of its usage. We also have uh, a wiki page that goes in great details uh, over the over how to use the library. Uh, it goes over the motivation one more time as in the in the readme, and also explains some concepts that Helenus uh, builds upon. So first of all, it introduces or it mentions three concepts that come from the Java, the Java driver, um, which Helenus is built on top of. So these three concepts are prepared statement, bound statement, and type codec. A prepared statement is a way, uh, or it's a preferred way that we define DML operations such as insert or select. What we usually do is we define a string literal uh, with the operation that we want to do. Uh, we hand over this uh, this string literal to the driver so it can parse it and validate the query. Then we have the bound statement. So a bound statement is whenever we want to execute a prepared statement, we have to first bind the parameters that we want this prepared statement to be executed with. Usually what we do is we define these parameters with the, with the question mark and that defines how many parameters that a prepared statement would have. Now, finally, we have a type codec. A type codec tells the driver how to encode and decode a particular JVM type, where that's a string, an int, or a boolean, or a more complex type such as a collection or a UDT. Now, Helenus builds on top of these concepts, as I mentioned. On the one hand, we have the Scala prepared statement. So this is an extension on the original prepared statement. Actually, a Scala prepared statement is a prepared statement and also brings the capability of being able to treat it as a function. So whenever we have a Scala prepared statement, we can use its, its applied method, treat it as a function, provide the, the, the input parameters or the bound parameters that the, the statement defined, and then get a bound statement out of that um, application. Then we have the Scala bound statement. Again, this is also an extension over the original bound statement, which 
carries along some extra information such as its output type, which, well, the original bound statement doesn't have. Now, uh, we also have a row mapper. So a row mapper tells handles how to extract um, uh, the value, values out of a row, such as uh, transforming a row into a case class. Now, um, row mappers can be defined explicitly. We can, we can um, instruct Helenus how to map these rows to, um, to some desired output type on a case-by-case -case basis, but also, or more importantly, or usually we use them uh, implicitly. We, uh, we define it or we mark uh, row mapper instances as an, as an implicit value. And then Helenus finds the appropriate type so it can map a row. Then we have adapters. So adapters are a way of putting things into um, a Scala prepare statement. So are a way of adapting a complex type such as a case class to a prepare statement parameter. Uh, we'll see that in a moment. Um, then we have a mapping. So a mapping is an abstraction that was added recently and what it does, it brings the two previous abstractions, the adapter and the row mapper, under the same abstraction. Its original goal is to make working with case classes easier. Um, usually when, when I mention that, or when I mention that a Scala prepare statement can be used as a function, it means that it can also be tuppled. So we can think that each one of its parameters can, could be treated as a, as a tuple uh, that we want to, that we have to provide. Now, as we know, Scala 213 only supports up to 22 uh, uh, fields in a tuple, and a, but a case class could have more than 22. So a mapping is uh, in its original goal was to be able to <coughs> extend this limitation. Limitation. Then we have a column mapper. So a column mapper um, helps or tells Helenus how to convert a column or some columns into a field in a of a case class. Usually a row mapper expects, uh, or when it's derived implicitly, it maps one column to uh, one field. So there is a one-to-one -one relationship. Now we can also construct some more complex column mappers that would allows us to group several columns into a, a single more complex type. An example of this is, let's say that instead of defining a UDT for a coordinate that has latitude, longitude, and altitude, we map each one of those values that are represented as a case class into different columns. A column mapper allows us to do that mapping, to be able to use these three separate columns and map it to a single field. Then we have a column naming scheme. So um, usually the, the naming scheme that we have in Scala is different than the naming scheme that we have in databases. In Scala, we usually use camel case to define the names of our fields. Whereas in, in a database, columns are defined with snake case. So a column naming scheme defines how field names in a case class are mapped to column names. Finally, we have pager. So pager allows us to iterate through results in a paginated fashion. Actually, um, and this is something that I'll cover in a, in a separate video, is that how pagination works with Cassandra, depending on how what API you approach, works a bit differently, at least from the user's perspective. So a pager, taps into these algorithms or taps in, into these APIs, but does it in a unified fashion. So it doesn't matter if you're using the synchronous or the asynchronous API, or even the reactive API that we'll see here, they all work in the same, in the same manner. You we don't have to adapt the API. Then uh, the wiki covers something about queries and statements. So as I mentioned, a Scala prepared statement can be treated as a function, but that's not the only way that we can define queries or statements in, um, in Helenus. We can also use interpolated statements. So this works uh, similar to interpolated strings where we define a query and we inject the values that are going to be used as parameters. 
um, this um, function or this um, feature is actually inspired by a norm which uh, Helenus takes a bit of inspiration from yeah so that's uh, that's basically it we also have examples that you can check we have an examples repository where the examples mention um, or go over um, the a similar domain that I'll show you uh, today or the same domain actually and uh, there are different um, example projects for ACA, for the Asynchronous API, for Beko and for the Synchronous API. So let's, uh, let's get started, let's jump onto the code. So um, what, I'm, what I'm going to cover is uh, the same domain as I covered on the previous sections or the previous sessions. Um, O'Reilly has this book called uh, Definitive Cassandra uh, or Cassandra the Definitive Guide and in this uh, book there is a modeling ex exercise that goes over hotels and reservations. This live session goes over the same domain so we are going to tackle uh, hotels, the hotel section of that exercise and we are going to keep reservations out of, out of this session just to avoid um, from repeating ourselves. So this uh, hotel section has uh, different tables. So each table is meant to answer a different query or to answer a different question. And um, we have currently we have five tables and a UDT that is meant to encode the address. So for example, we can see that we have uh, hotels by point of interest. Uh, which given a point of interest will give us information about a, a hotel. Then we have the hotels table that given an ID, it will give us the information about that particular hot hotel given and also the point of interest that are near that hotel and so on. It will offer different, uh, different queries such as uh, the available rooms for an hotel uh, by a given date and also the amenities by a room. So then what we have is we have a repository. So this repository is using PECO. Uh, we have an implicit Cassandra session. So this is coming from the PECO connectors and some execution context because, well, we have to execute this, uh, these queries. Uh, then after we have that, we have, uh, we define a, a queries instance that I'll show you in a moment. Uh, this is where all the queries that um, Peco and Helenus are going to use. Um, and then for each query or each question that we have, we have a different method, such as find hotels near a given point of interest by a given name. Then we have a find hotel by ID, find a point of interest by hotel, and so on. So each query is uh, executing and answering uh, a different uh, a different question. Now we also have some insertion methods to insert hotels or to insert amenities. Uh, then inside the, the companion object we have a, a queries class that uh, receives that Cassandra session and that execution context. First it registers a UDT a codec that's because we are using uh, UDT, let's say we are using a, an address case class and we are mapping that UDT to that case class and we have to register a codec before we can use it. Uh, then we have the different queries defined define as fields for, on, that, um, on that class. We are uh, preparing each one, of the, each one of the queries. So usually uh, we have, a, as I mentioned, we have a string uh, literal and from the string literal we prepare it we hand it over to the driver and the driver gives us back a prepared state and actually if I do this I check the type I get a future of prepare statement so wh why a future of prepare statement that's because we are using a, a session a Cassandra session coming from Pico or coming from Aka and we always um, are working with a with a synchronous um, statements and well the even the the session that we uh, that we have the underlying session 
as we see here, uh, is actually prepared or is built asynchronously. And then we have exactly the same for everything else. We are grabbing the, the, the string literal and we are preparing that, that query. Then let's go back to the first one, to the first query. So uh, we have the session, we select on it and we provide uh, the query. So this uh, query is, uh, as I mentioned, a feature of our prepare statement. And we, whenever we want to execute this query, you have to transform it into a bound statement. So we have to map on the future and then we have to bind the, the parameter, bind the query with the parameter and we end up with a future of a bound statement. So the um, PECO API allows us to provide a future of a statement in which a bound statement is, an ex uh, is extending of, but um, well, Scala prepare, state, uh, sorry, prepare statement is not. So we have first to bind it. Once we have that, we have um, select on that query. What we have is we have a source or a anaka or peco string source with, where each one of the elements is a row and the materialized value is not used. So after that, this is something uh, quite similar to what we were having on the previous sessions. So for each row, we are mapping that row into a more, let's say, a more useful type such as a hotel. For the uh, find by ID, we do something similar. So we first get the prepare statement, then we bind the prepare statement to get a bound statement. And in this case, we are selecting only one result because we are going only to find one hotel by ID. And after that, we are mapping and doing the same. And you can see that we are doing that same thing over and over again for each one of the queries. So, okay, let's see if we can um, uh, install Helenus and see how we can use Helenus with Peko or with Aka. So, on the uh, installation page, what we have to do is we have to first install um, or include in our dependencies Helenus. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to include um, Helenus, but in this case, I also have to include Peko. So Peko is a separate dependency, which actually doesn't need to. Um, we started doing this because, or doing it this way, because the first integration point was Aka, uh, and then Aka was forked into this uh, business user license, so we have to split the modules and make, make sure that if people wanted to use Helenus with the open source version or with the business user line version, then we would cater if the um, APIs diverge at any moment. Um, Peko, in Peko, that's not the case because well, it's open source and it's under the Apache um, software foundation. So we don't expect it to have this divergence from the API. So, Peko in this case could be part of core as, a, as an optional dependency. So, okay, let's, uh, let's update this. And uh, while that gets updated, um, this project comes with some tests that verify that everything is working. So right now I, I haven't integrated anything uh, or I haven't put Helenus into the project. And I can see that the execution for each one of the queries with just Aka or just Peko works fine. So, okay, let's go back to SPD. So now that I have um, Helenus in the project, I need to convert this. So let me delete this method because we don't need it. It's uh, from somewhere else. So <clears throat> um, the second thing that I told you on previous sessions that we need to do after installing Helenus was to mark the SQL session as implicit. In this case, we don't need to do that because our um, SQL session is replaced by the Cassandra session that comes from either Peko or from Aka. They work interchangeably, let's say. So the second thing, uh, sorry, the third thing that we need to do is we actually, we're going to start translating some queries and we're going to import Helenus into context. So we import Helenus and we also import 
the PECO integration. Now, once I have imported these two things, I can start migrating some of the queries. So let's uh, migrate first uh, first query. So the way that we do that is we don't hand over the uh, preparing the query with to the session. We actually um, migrate this to SQL or use the extension method SQL async, uh, transforming this query into a SQL query. And then from this, we are going to prepare it. So prepare is a method that takes different type parameters, takes one type parameter per bind parameter that we want to use on that prepared statement. So in this case, it's only one. And we know that point name is of type string. So let's put it like this. So once I have done that, I have transformed this future of, pre of prepare statement into a future of Scala prepare st statement one of a string and row. The one in Scala prepare statement means that is a, a Scala prepare statement that takes only one parameter, in this case of type string, and then its output parameter type is of type row. So once I have done that, notice that the compiler or at, at least IntelliJ is not complaining and I can still run the tests. which pass. So this goes back to the fact of what I mentioned. A Scala prepare statement is a statement, is a, is a prepare statement. So the purpose with that was that to be able to define integration points and to ease the migration from whatever you were using into using Helenus. So now let's um, migrate how we execute the query into uh, how we would do it with Helenus. So we do this, import Helenus, and then we, as we did before, we import the PECO integration. So once we have done that, what we are going to convert is we are going to convert how we execute the query. So now that I have uh, migrated the query by POI, I can um, bind it like I was doing before, or I could even, let's say, this is the prepare statement. I can do prepare statement and treat this as a function, right? So I can set it like this, and this is going to give me a Scala bound statement of row. So I can test that and see that still works. But uh, Helenus provides some shorthand syntax to do several things at the same time. So what we can do is we can execute, sorry, we have we can convert this into a read source. So a source that would will read from the database and it will take the parameter that we have defined when we prepared it. In this case is of type string, so we're going to give it the boy name. So once we have done that, notice that <clears throat> I'm getting a source of row and I can delete that part and test again and it pass. So we have seen that we have gone from selecting and then mapping and then binding all in one, all in one line, all in one go. <coughs> so um, let's see if we can we can do the same thing for for um, for the next query. So the next query will be the same. So we have this. We remove how we are preparing it. We are transforming into SQL async, and we are preparing and providing the type that we expect that bind parameter to be, which is of type string. Now, again, uh, IntelliJ is not complaining. This still works. 
So <clears throat> what we can do is we can do the same thing. So as read source, we do the ID. Then I, we could say um, take one or um, yeah, we can say take one. Um, yeah, that's one way to do it, but we could do, we already know that this is only going to bring one result. So it doesn't really matter that we have to select one. We can simply do this. So let's map the row like we're doing here. Let's cut this and now what we can do is we can execute wrong width and we want sync. Nope, not that one. Of head option. And why is it complaining? Oh, is it? Yeah. Because yeah, because it wants it wants a session. It wants a system. Yeah, it wants an actor system. Okay, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> something that I didn't expect. Uh, let's see how we can resolve it. Yeah, yeah, we can we can we can do that as well. So uh, instead of treating this as a as a um, stream, we can just treat it as a function. So we can do it like we were doing before. So we have the result set and we want a next option and we're mapping, we have the row and let's convert this. Hmm, right, yeah. Yeah, that's work. Okay, yeah, we have been, uh, we, we stopped using the string, so we are just executing this uh, asynchronously. So, <clears throat> okay, let's change that bit so um yeah let me think so maybe we, what we can do and yeah let's do that let's change this this is not how actually it should be but we can change this to session and to an act actor system once we have that uh, and let's import the dispatcher. Yeah, I'm doing this because I do want to show you what's next. Yeah, that still works. Okay, so let's let's switch this back to a read source, and then let's this will be the role. And then once we have that, we have to run it with a head option. Yeah, and that, that works. Yeah, great. Okay. So the next thing that I want to cover, we have already see how to um, install handles, how to rewrite some of the queries to convert it to Scala prepare statements. Let's see how to use a row mapper to map the each one of the elements in the in the stream into something more use, usable. So what we are going to do 
is we are going to introduce a row mapper for hotel. So just like we did on previous sessions, to introduce a row mapper, we can um, derive it implicitly or auto semi-auto derive it. So we need to import Helenus. Uh, we don't need Peco at this point. We don't need the integration. So this is coming from, from core. And what we do is we define a mapper. That's going to be a row mapper. We provide the type parameter, which that row mapper will extract or will convert a row to. And in this case, it's of type hotel. Now, what we can do is we can define that to be of type hotel or use the, sorry, the instance method, the apply method to instantiate a row mapper. So one thing that I didn't show you is why am I doing this? So, so how is it possible that I do this conversion? So if you see here, we have uh, on the hotel case class, we have an ID, we have a name, we have a phone, we have an address, and we have a voice or points of interest. So these names are expected to be found by the row that results from the query. And if we go back to the hotels table, we see that the names of the columns are the same of the fields. If the row mapper, when it's mapping over the rows, can find each one of these um, columns, then everything will be okay. Otherwise, an exception will be thrown. This is something that usually goes uh, on the prag or which field that goes on over the pragmatic side instead of wrapping everything inside a try or inside a monad or something more complicated. Just like the Java driver does, for better or for worse, it throws an exception. So um, with the asynchronous API and also with the um, with Peko or with Akka, we can recover from this failure. So it's not a big issue. Now, if by any chance, these names don't align and maybe uh, POIS here is not POIS, it's points of interest. RowMapper also allows us to use this rename method where we could define that POIS is defined as points, sorry, points of interest. So that, that could be a way to um, tell the RowMapper that it doesn't need to look at um, uh, or just doesn't need to look for a column called voice, but just to a column called point of interest to use or to define that uh, that field. Okay, so once I have a row mapper, the next thing that I can do is I can use it. The way that I can use that is whenever I have a query what I can do is I can, after I have pre prepared it, I can say that this results in some type, which in this case is hotels. Notice that I'm using the as method. Now IntelliJ is complaining and that's because I no longer have a row. So if I inspect the type, I can see that row is of type hotel and I can easily go and remove all this and I'm going to execute the test which are going to fail yes so here the compiler is telling me could not find implicit value for parameter mapper and it's pointing at the hotel so what's going on here is that Whenever we have a row mapper, Helenus needs to know how to convert it, each one of the types that that case class is composed of into and from uh, SQL types. In this case, out of the box, Helenus provides type codex for ID, for name, for phone, and for collections such as this one. Now, what it doesn't provide and it doesn't know how to provide is uh, codec for uh, an address. So that's where uh, UDT's codecs come in. 
and we can see that or we can see how we would do that with Helenus. So what we can do is we can import Helenus. Again, the same thing. We don't need to use Peko in this in this instance. <coughs> Sorry, because uh, this comes from from the core functionality. So once we have done, we have imported Helenus. We need to define a type codec for address. So type codec, so as, I, as I mentioned in the beginning, comes from the driver. Doesn't it doesn't is not defined by Helenus, and we want a type codec for address. Now, to get a UDT codec for this is quite simple. We use codec dot and then UDT off, and here we have to provide the type that we want that UDT for. The UDT off method takes other optional parameters such as the key space, the name, and whether it's frozen or not. If it's, it's not required, it's not mandatory, the way that UDs are encoded, I'll, I'll create it on a, on a separate session, but with this will, will suffice. So once we have done that, then the test and the compilation pass. Okay, so we can check the diff and we, we can see that how much this method has changed that we have preparing, we were selecting, we were binding, we were mapping. Everything, everything has been condensed in one line. So that's for the um, that's for the row mapper. Um, I'm going to skip adapters for the moment and I'm going to show you the other way that we can define uh, queries or statements and that's with interpolated statements. So what we can do is let's copy this query. This is point by hotel. That's here. Let's go. Let's paste the query. Unfortunately, interpolated queries don't have um, strip margins, so we have to put them all in one line. But what we can do is we can prefix this instead of with an S with SQL async. Uh, in previous, session, uh, previous sessions, I show you that we were using SQL or SQL async. When using with Helenus, we can only use SQL async because we don't have access to a SQL session. We we have access to a future of a SQL session, so everything that we do have to has to be done asynchronously. And then once we, I have the query, I can inject the parameter. And if you notice, I, if I check the type, I have a future of a wrapped bound statement. So this is another extension of the original bound statement that results in rows. So now once I have done that. I can do as read source like I was doing before. Now notice that this read source doesn't require any input parameter because I have already provided those or provided that into the interpolated query itself. And once I have done that, I should be able to run the test and still work. Now under the hood, this query is still being prepared by the driver, is still being validated. We just don't see it. We get the prepare and the bind in one go. Now let's also introduce a row mapper so we can get rid of this uh, mapping. So we do the same thing. We import Helenus. And we implement the row mapper. Now, once I have the row mapper, I can go back to the query. I can convert it to as with using the as method to return points of interest. And if I run the test, 
they still pass. Okay, yeah, I could go ahead and do the same thing for uh, available rooms by hotel. I could do the transformation, but let's not cover that. It's um, not going to be going to be that important. Uh, let's cover adapters. So, as I mentioned, what we can think of is that uh, we can treat Scala prepare statements as functions, and um, each one of those uh, functions, or each one of those the, each one of the parameters of that function, is one of the uh, bind parameters that we have defined in the query. Now, um, usually when we are, let's say in this case, inserting a hotel, we have to hand over the hotel and we have to split or we have to feed in or deconstruct, another way to put it, deconstruct a, a hotel into the different parts that we want to insert. Now, since I already know that I'm going to insert a hotel, it would be nice to avoid having to prepare it with, um, with each one of those parameters, and that's where an adapter comes from. So let's take it step by step. So we have insert hotels. So let's get rid of this and let's first prepare the query. So we are going to convert it to SQL async, and then we're going to prepare to take five parameters, which are going to be first a string for the ID, a string for the name, a string for the phone, an address for the address, and a set of strings for the points of interest. Now, <clears throat> compiler doesn't complain. We can go back and we can treat this as a function. Now, uh, oh, oh <laughs> wrong way. So we can treat this as a function and we can see already that this is complaining because uh, we have a method called to UDT that we were using to convert the address into a UDT value. So UDT value is a, an abstraction that comes from the driver uh, that, let, that knows how to map uh, a, a UDT type into, well, like uh, in, into the case class or, well, into the object. So let's remove that. We don't need that conversion anymore. And also we don't need to convert it to a Java, to a Scala, yeah, to a Java set. So this is one of another of the uh, things that we want to provide with uh, with Helenos, avoiding all these conversions between Java and Scala or UDT and case classes. Um, we wanted to have or to offer better support when using uh, the driver with with Scala. So yeah, I have run the test and they passed. They still pass. So. We can, we can already see this. So we can see that this is a prepare statement that takes an ID, takes a name, takes a phone, takes a, an address, and takes some points of interest. We notice that this is exactly the same order that the hotel has its methods defined. So what we can do once we realize that is we can provide an adapter for that. So let's derive an adapter for it. So we first import adapter. Then an adapter is we if we see a signature, it's just a method that takes that takes an A and produces a B. In this case, what we are going to take is we are going to take a hotel and we are going to deconstruct that hotel into the different types that it has. In this case, it's a, again, a string for the ID, a string for the name, a string for the phone, an address for the address, and a set of strings for the points of interest. Now, notice that this order is the same order as the one that I have here and it's the same order that I have here and is the same order which I used to prepare 
the query. Now, once I have that, I can just derive an adapter for that. And I don't need to specify the types um, that are on, on the B type. So this is string, 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 and address, and set of strings. I can just provide a, a hotel, and the uh, and Helenus will uh, will derive the adapter so long as, as it can find that it can well convert this hotel into this tuple. Actually, well, uh, all these um, conversions or all these derivation comes from Helen from Shapeless. Uh, Helenus relies uh, heavily on shapeless so once we have done that what we can do is we can say that this query is going to be prepared from a hotel once i have done that instead of executing the query like this i can do um execute or execute async. Notice that this is expecting a hotel. So let's do it. Yeah, let's do it in one go. Hotel, or yeah, actually we can execute it like this and this should be the same. But I'm going to show you something else. So, because this is, this is not where I want to go. So, okay, we can render this. And that's it. So, <clears throat> so far we have seen that we can convert a query to a, to a source where we can uh, read from a table and uh, the source will give us each one of the rows that we have. Now, uh, Aka and Peko provide a way to put things in and usually that's with a, with a flow. So there is a, there is a write flow that we send elements to and it will, they will get inserted into Cassandra. So, um, Helenus provides the same thing, so we can convert this to a write flow. But what we have done on top of that, so writing to flow or using a flow as, as a way to write to, to the database is, is possible. But what we can do is we can also, uh, or we think that it's also usable to think about this like as syncs. So we can sync information to. So what we can do is we can say as write sync. Oh, sorry, yeah, not as write flow, as write sync. And we provide some mm, write settings. And in this case, I'm going just to provide default. So now if we add a type annotation for this, notice that this is a sync that expects hotels. And when it's done, it will return a uh, future of done. Now, obviously the, the compiler is complaining because, well, we don't execute async anymore and taking only one, um, uh, think, taking or uh, materializing an entire stream for just one value seems like an overkill, but this is still possible. You could think that you uh, would have um, a big list of hotels that you want to insert and you can, you could treat the this as a, as a sync so you could say uh, queries and then yeah I need a source so let's say that we have a, a source with a single element that's hotel and then what I want to do is I want to run it with that thing that we have provided not not the <laughs> the best way to to approach this now just running the materializing a screenshot for just a single single result. Uh, but nonetheless, we can run the test and that took the path. So it's still possible, right? Like we can, um, we have convert the prepare statement to a sync and everything works. Like it's preparing the query, it's adapting the query from, or adapting the parameters from the case class and then converting that into a sync. But just to show you that in this should work. So you can see that these are different methods that we can that comes from <clears throat> uh, from pickup. Like uh, if we want a batch or with context, we can also do that. So let's write it this as flow and let's see what's the flow. So the flow takes a hotel, 
and uh, returns can hotel so doesn't modify it in any way and yeah it's not used so let's change this let's do instead of running it with we're going to do via and then we are going to run with let's do send ignore and we don't care about this value and if we oh sorry too fast yeah the test still pass okay so uh, I'm recording this and are they uh, that's why the lightning could look a bit different and also <laughs> my hair could be could look a bit different uh, I'm recording this section because when I tried it yesterday uh, the last section of the video wasn't working properly and I wanted to show you uh, the mapping abstraction so what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the uh, version uh, because I needed one release uh, and I just released this uh, this version let's see if it's um, available yeah so now um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the session a mapping is an abstraction that brings both a row mapper and an adapter together and its original intention was to overcome this limitation where the adapter would adapt a case class into a tuple the tuple being the representation that we use to define um, the, the parameters that the Scala prepare statement takes and in which we could only have 22 parameters but a case class can have more fields um, the mapping is meant to solve that situation or to fix that limitation so once we have done that once we have um, have the prepare and the from what we can do is we can go back to the hotel we can replace this with a mapping and we can also remove or replace both the mapper and the adapter with a single definition so what we're going to do is we're going to define an implicit mapping that would be of type hotel and then we can use the instance method to instantiate a mapping from for a hotel now the mapping also takes um, is able to rename the fields of the case classes uh, into the columns that are expected in a similar way or in the same way as the row mapper did so I could say that uh, voice is actually points of interest so yeah that's uh that's what you can do if you want to have a different a different mapping uh, now what we can do is we can go back the adapter is failing because well even if I mentioned that this um, we have these two things um, providing this, the same abstractions due to let's say a limitation uh, the adapter is not an adapter we, we still have to um, abide by the same rules and provide uh, a tuple so that's not what we want and we can do everything in one go we can define the, the, how we prepare and where, where did we get it from with the prepare from method once we have that done that we can define what's the field and that's all that it's required so what this will do instead of relying on the order of the parameters um, it will inspect the um, statement at runtime and it will come up on on what's the mapping depending on the fields that a hotel defines and the, what the table defines so in a similar way as a row mapper would do to extract the information out the mapping is putting the information in now once I have done that this uh, still works so I should be able to go back to the test and run them oh yeah I need to reload the project
I have done that, the test still pass. So yeah, so in this case we are treating it uh, like a flow, but let's roll that back and actually let's just make it a regular Scala prepare statement and let's use that to avoid the string materialization. So we want this. We want to execute a sync with a hotel. And then we don't care about the result. And running the test again. Yeah. So that was uh, all that I wanted to show. Um, please uh, go back to the uh, to the um, to the project page um, uh, if you if you want to give it a try if you want to give Helen as a try um, we, we we would be happy to to get feedback from the uh, for the library or what does it work that what doesn't what can be improved we are already have some some issues on our uh, Git, github project but yeah, this is mostly based on the only interactions that we have had with the project so far. So yeah, thank you for, for listening. And as I mentioned on the next sessions, I'm going to go uh, more in deep, uh, more in depth, sorry, um, regarding the different uh, pieces such as row mappers or adapters or mappings. Uh, also um, have a session for, for uh, pager so we can see how pagination comes into play. Thank you.